Il me fait plaisir d'avoir l'occasion de présenter le docteur Eugene Brownwald, qui, selon moi, est le médecin par excellence du dernier demi-siècle. Il a énormément influencé ma carrière et aussi mon cheminement de ma carrière. Tout comme William Osler nous a fait mieux apprécier l'importance de la pathologie dans l'évaluation de la pathophysiologie de la maladie, donc de son diagnostic et de son traitement, autant que Dr. Brownwald nous a fait apprécier l'importance de la physiologie dans la pathophysiologie de la maladie, de son diagnostic et de son traitement. Je pense que plusieurs d'entre vous, je reconnais certains résidents de cardiologie, finissant en cardiologie, ont euh, vécu euh, les réunions euh, tous les semaines des clubs Brownwald pour essayer de passer nos examens. Et aussi, euh, pour ceux qui ont fait de la médecine, euh, tout le monde qui a fait de la médecine, mais surtout ceux qui ont fait de la médecine interne, les clubs Harrison, où on faisait la tournée en différentes euh, domiciles tous les semaines pour évaluer et étudier un chapitre de ce grand texte euh, que le docteur Brownwald a été un éditeur de Harrison. Donc, c'est avec énormément de plaisir que je présente le docteur Brownwald pour une présentation qui va nous donner une, une perspective de cardiologie du 21e siècle, mais commençant au milieu du dernier siècle. C'est une présentation extraordinaire. Docteur Brownwald. Good afternoon. It's a pleasure for me to be here with you. I want to congratulate you on the achievement of completing this first and most important step in your postdoctoral training. You have tremendous opportunities, and in leafing through the program, I see the wide array of general medicine and uh, medical specialties in which you've trained And certainly the people of this province and the people of this country need the important information that you have available to you. It's also a um, very specially interesting uh, experience for me today because uh, I have been privileged to attend many graduations, uh, both in my country, in the US, and in other countries as well, in Europe and um, in Latin America. And uh, this is very different. This feels very different because in all of the graduations that I have participated in and attended, it's been the medical students who have gotten a degree and the postdoctoral trainees like you are Have, you know, have a couple of drinks and some hors d'oeuvres, and, um, and they get a diploma, but they never come together. And I was saying to uh, the dean that um, this sends a very important message. This sends the message that all of you postdoctoral students are students of the University of Montreal by coming together. And uh, uh, it's an important, very, very important message, and it's one that uh, I'm going to try to follow up on. So my topic today is to talk about perspectives of cardiology, my subspecialty, and I'm going to look ahead to the 21st century. But I think we have to talk about past achievements. How did we get to where we are? And then some ideas about where we're going. So first, let me start with what I believe to have been the 10 greatest achievements in cardiology in the 20th century. The first one is electrocardiography. The development of the ECG machine was the birth of cardiology as a specialty of internal medicine. And this was developed by a great professor 
of Physiology in Holland, uh, Professor Willem Eindhoven, who developed the EC machine in 1903. And for many years, the definition of a cardiologist was a doctor who had an ECG machine. This is what the first ECG machine looked like. Um, and you can see how the patient's uh, leg and his left arm are in brine, in, in, in heavy salt water. And then you see this uh, horrible looking instrument. It looks like a torture chamber, but it was not. Now, the second major discovery, uh, I believe, was provided by this man, Nikolai Anichkov, and that was in 1913. This shows Anichkov uh, toward the end of World War II. He was, when he made his discovery, he was an assistant professor at, uh, at St. Petersburg and he worked with a medical student named Chalotel. Here he became later the senior and highest level physician in the Soviet military, but we'll forgive him that. Because what he did do is he fed rabbits very high concentrations of cholesterol so that their blood concentration rose tenfold to a thousand milligrams per deciliter. He sacrificed the animals and found that they had atherosclerotic plaques in the aorta. And this was the seed of the whole cholesterol story that everybody in the world knows about. Not only we as physicians, but everybody who's not a physician knows how important cholesterol is in, um, in producing arteriosclerosis and other very serious conditions. Now the third um, great discovery, I, I have three people here, uh, and uh, the first one, you see Werner Forsman. Forsman was a resident in urological surgery. You heard me correctly, not neurological, urological. And uh, in, in a small town in Germany. And he had a strange idea. He wanted to see if he could inject drugs into the heart. As a urologist, he was very familiar with catheters. He cut down on his own arm inserted a catheter, walked up a flight of stairs to an x-ray machine and asked his nurse to take an x-ray. And this is it. And you can see the catheter coming up the arm in here and it ends up right here in the middle of the right atrium. Well, when his chief heard about this, he said,